Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to look at a 3D effect in Illustrator. Now this class was prompted by somebody who contacted me on Facebook and showed me this image from one of these stock sites and asked me how I would do that. So I'm going to show you how I would approach a task like this. So we're going to create a new document. Doesn't really matter what size document you're working on, except that because this is 3D, the smaller the document, the better. It's not going to be so tough rendering it. So I'm going to choose a fairly small document. Mine is a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels in size. So I'm just going to clear up my artboard and let's get started with this. To begin, we're going to need a heart shape because that is the shape of the element we're creating. So I'm going to the pen tool. I'm just going to click and drag in a sort of upwards direction to start my heart. I'm not too worried about how it looks as I draw it at this stage because I can easily adjust it in a minute. So we come around here, click and drag downwards and then come here and try and pick up this point here so that my ending point is directly under my starting point. I'll press the escape key because that stops that pen tool from being attached to the line, stops that rubber banding, and now we can make some adjustments to this line. We need to do that before we do the next step because we want to make sure that we're working with our sort of final shape. So this is going to be my sort of half a heart shape. Now at this point with the direct selection tool, I would select over these two points, the two points that we need to be in direct alignment. Now we're seeing this one, but there's a hollow square here and there are filled squares here. So only these two are selected. We want to make sure that these are directly lined over each other. They're, so they're on exactly the same vertical line. So I'll choose object and then path, go to average and I'll choose vertical and click OK. And that just ensures that they're lined up perfectly. I'll select my heart. I need to make a second one. I'm going to turn off the fill right now so I just have a stroke and let's pick up a different stroke color because black is a really hard color to work with at this stage So, or when we start doing our rotation. So I'm just going to pick up a sort of lighter red. Okay, with the shape selected, I'm coming over here to where the rotate tool is because underneath it is the reflect tool. Select that hold the Alt key on a PC, Option on a Mac. You want to just hover over this anchor point until you see the word anchor appear and with the Alt or Option key still pressed down, just click once because that sets that as the point for reflecting this shape. We want to go across the vertical, check the preview to make sure it looks like it's right and click Copy. You want to make sure that before you do this, you actually have the entire shape selected with the selection tool because we've been working with the direct selection tool. If you don't go and select the whole shape, then only some points are going to flip over and it's just going to look pretty awful. So you just have to undo that and start again. Select over both these shapes because we've got one shape here and one shape here. We want to join them. Object, path, join. Okay, so now I have a single shape. And that's ready in just a minute to go and do our 3D effect with, but we need something to map onto our 3D shape. So click away from this. I'm going to press the letter D for the default colors and I want a black fill and no stroke. So here's my black fill. Here's no stroke. Create a sort of long narrow rectangle filled with black, no stroke. With it selected, I'll choose effect, distort and transform and then transform I'll turn preview on. I probably want about nine copies. That would give me ten lines in total. Nine copies plus one original. And I'm just going to start moving the vertical value until I get a nice set of stripes. So I'm pretty happy with that. Although I think my line is probably too thick and possibly not long enough. So let's just go and zoom in on the top here because everything is associated with this line here. So I'm just going to target it and let's just shrink it down a bit. Maybe just shrinking down a bit will solve my problems with it. Yep, I think that does. It looks better now. So I'll select over this line which is the total shape right now. This is just a line with some transformations on it. If we go to the appearance panel, you'll see there's a transform effect there. And that's the actual shape. It's just a shape plus a transform. Well, we need to make this into multiple shapes and we do that by expanding it. Object, expand appearance. 
At this point, I like to do object ungroup until ungroup is no longer selectable until it's grayed out. So that tells me in the layers panel over here, I'm going to have a path for each one of those lines and no groups. And that's what I've got, lots of paths here. Well, with those still selected, I'll choose object group. So I've made sure that my group is really, really neat and tidy. So I have a heart and a set of lines. Well, the set of lines are going to be made into a symbol. So I'll open the symbols palette. You can get to that by choosing window and then symbol and just drag and drop this line in as a symbol and just click OK. You don't have to set anything special here. Now, the reason why we make a symbol from those lines is that the only way that you can map a image to a 3D object is if it happens to be a symbol. So the element that you want to map to our 3D object that we're about to create here has to be a symbol or you can't do it. It's just not possible. So here is my heart and I'm going to choose Effect 3D and I'm going to choose Extrude and Bevel. We can't use Revolve because Revolve wants to make a sort of circular shape. And if we want a sort of nested heart shape, it has to be a extrusion. So we'll choose 3D, Extrude and Bevel. I'm going to turn Preview on because we want to see what this looks like. You can see that we've got an off-axis front. So the thing is twisted around. If we just choose Front, then we're going to get a front on look. That's fine for now. Now what I want is a deep extrusion. So I'm just going to come in here and make my extrusion really, really deep. And we're not saying anything because we're looking from the top onwards. So I've got a 1383 point extrusion, but I'm looking straight onto it. And so I'm not seeing the effects. So what I need to do is to adjust the perspective and so let's just start dialing up the perspective. And as we do, you can see that we're getting our extrusion effect. So now we're seeing into the shape here. I think I've probably overindulged myself here with the extrusion depth. And I can probably just increase the perspective a little bit. I'm just looking at the top heart and the bottom heart at this stage just to see what I'm getting. I'm going to click here on more options because that's going to open up the rest of the panel here. And what we can do is we can set this to diffuse shading and you can add lights. So at the moment we have one light source here, but we can move that around or we can click here and add a new light so you can light different areas of this shape. So we're probably not going to use this, but I think it's worth saying how you can light a 3D object just using diffuse shading and add your light points. We're going to map art. Here we have 10 surfaces and it's a little bit of guesswork exactly which surface you're going to use. So when you're on a surface, Illustrator will try and tell you what surface you're on. It'll give you a set of lines. And if you think this surface might be one that you need to map onto, then you can just go and get your symbol. So from the symbol list, just choose new symbol. And we're going to choose scale to fit and just leave it at that. But we didn't get any effect here because we're not seeing anything here. We're just going to clear that because that obviously wasn't one of the surfaces of this shape that we can apply an image to. It's probably the back side of this. And because we're looking front on to this extrusion, we can't actually see the back. So there's no point in mapping an image to a surface that you can't even see. So let's try five and see if that has anything and we'll just do scale to fit, nothing there, so we'll just clear it. So this is part six or surface six, let's try this. Yep, this one fits. So we're actually getting some mapping here. So all I'm going to do is do scale to fit. Let's go on to the next surface. Probably not, probably not, pretty much definitely yes. And let's scale that to fit. And let's go to the tent surface. And that's one in here. Let's do scale to fit. And we'll just click OK. 
Now if I want the colour in here as well as the black, so if I want this sort of bronzy colour, I will leave it looking as it does. But if I don't, I'll just go to no shading and that removes all the shading and all I'm seeing is the lines itself. So I'll just click OK. Now I'm seeing a little bit of legacy colour in here. If you do, it's best to just make the stroke the exact same colour as you've used in the symbol. So let's go to the stroke and let's make it black. And so the legacy colours are sort of matching the shape that we have. Of course, this is a live effect. If I go to the appearance panel, I can remove the extrusion from this shape and just take it back to what it was. You can also click on extrude and bevel and I can make adjustments to it. So let's turn the preview on. You can make adjustments in this dialog. You might have to go back and recheck your mapped surfaces to get the result that you want, but it is possible to come back in and make adjustments to these because 3D effects in Illustrator are live, so they're perfectly editable. I hope this helps the reader that asks me how to do this and I hope it helps you too in understanding a bit more about 3D in Illustrator. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley and thank you for visiting my YouTube channel.